Williams. I am Dr. Dorothy Williams. I'm the Executive Director of the Black Community Resource Centre here in Cote de Neige, Montreal. I have a background in history and I am also a, an archivist and a librarian and I work in trying to save the documentary history of the black community in Montreal. That is my expertise. And I've written books on the subject. And um, I'm very much involved in community development, community economic development, community capacity building, and um, trying to create a better environment for black youth here in Quebec and black families. Yeah, my name is Arnim Winston Hector. Again, I was born in Trinidad and Tobago, the land of the hummingbird, the land where music, pad music, and calypso originated. Uh, I would like to say that I, I migrated to Canada, Quebec, on the 7th of March, 1968. And uh, I think uh, this is very, very, I made a good move. And I think, uh, as far as what you call working and uh, being involved in the trade union, I think I played my part and I, I'm still playing a part in the trade union movement. I guess for me, what intrigued me about you being, um, for us talking today, mm -hmm. is really about your relationship to labor and the significance that means for the black community in Quebec. And so, why don't you tell me what influenced you? I, I understand in Trinidad, you were really smitten by Uriah Butler. Butler fought against what you call like uh, domination, slavery, capitalism and slavery. They call him a radical because he stood up for the working class people. And to add to this, I would like to say, the important thing it showed me is like um, we, were f we were fighting and standing up for our rights. And so when you came into Quebec, you had this sense of justice, of how the labor movement can change people's lives. And so that's what formed what you did in Quebec, the kinds of actions that you took when you came here? Yes, of course. Uh, when I started with uh, the International Brotherhood Boilermakers Union, as a matter of fact, I think there was only about three or four black people, black guys, working in that industry. In that, really? Okay. Here in Quebec? Here in Quebec. And in, that, in the process of that, there was sort of a little what you call like a uh, there was just what you call, I would not call it racism, they were this they, they were discomfort, right? Okay. With us being there, they were inquisitive okay. because they thought, like as a black person, you should not be a trade man. Mm -hmm. Because in those days, they think everybody comes on the ship. Okay. And we were not from the ship. As a matter of fact, each and every one of us that came here within that period of time were trade men back from our previous country that we lived, our bird country. Right. So, however, we excelled and we were able to what you call to, there was unity after between the black guys and the French Canadian because most of the people I worked with are French Canadians. Okay. And you worked in French? Yes. At we that worked time. In, yeah, we worked in French all the while. Okay. With little English. In Quebec, the majority of people that I work with, which is people from Gaspé or Gaspésian, they were very timid towards what you call like the bosses. Uh, the working conditions were very, very, what you call like, uh, were very bad. Okay. They would let you work in certain environment with no mask. The, your life was in danger. There was no safety whatsoever. It wasn't a consideration. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right? So uh, we were able to fight against and fight against domination again. And we were able to shed a light so that the bosses through the union were able to stand up for the rights of these people, for our working class people. And this is in the Gaspé? No, uh, we worked all over uh, Quebec. 
Oh, so you travel? All over Quebec. Every I villages see. and town mm -hmm. I did work. Did you make the links? Obviously, you did some education with these men that you were working with. Yeah. Did you make links between them and the union in Trinidad at that time? Of course I did. Of course you I did. did. Of course I so did. So you helped internationalize their thought process about what was going on That's right. in the labor sector here in Quebec. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. And was this done in terms of um, a conference or visits or just maybe getting newspaper or newsletters or how did you make the connection? Well, uh, the connection would be made by visits. You visited, they went to Trinidad? No, no, or no. You, or I went to Trinidad. You went to Trinidad, okay. Yeah, and uh, I, I, we exchanged what you call documents. I took documents from here, Montreal. I took it to Trinidad, to the union office. I took what you call documents from the union office in Trinidad and brought it here to the Quebec, uh, what you call like uh, construction, the union here. So this local that you were working in mm -hmm. really began to see the world in a much broader perspective. From your perspective, is language a meaningful aspect of the history of Quebec social movements over the last 50 years? Do you think it really had an influence in the labor movement? Oh, yes. Uh, it really did. It really did and it really do because uh, we, we, I, I live to see that um, when René Levesque came into power, that uh, what he did, he, uh, what you call, he ejected, what you call like uh, the French solidarity into the working class people of Montreal and people in general. He made French more dominant towards the people. And uh, I think it being a very good thing also because it gave each and every one of the people a chance to, to learn French and to work in French, also in English. Since uh, we had what you call like the great uh, René Levesque came into power, these things were able to what you call like, uh, to put them on and to put the labels and uh, let people know that the French people exist. Because don't forget in, Engl in, uh, in history, they told you the English are the masters and the French are the slaves. I know I was kept down by the English in Trinidad and okay. Tobago, and uh, they stole my language because we used to speak what you call like a, a patois français, mm -hmm. with an English is a, it's a, like a tripod language. And when they came into power, when, when we had the first prime minister, Dr. Eric Eustace William, the schools, the government, they eliminated our language from the schools and forced English onto us. This is why today when people ask me, are you English? I am not English. I am what you call of an African descent. Mm -hmm. Right? And uh, I feel very embarrassed and shame when people ask me, what's your language? You speak, you speak English. I do not speak English properly. I am not an Englishman. I cannot speak my language. So where, where does this leave me? Languageless. And so you felt a real affinity with the people of Quebec and their struggle? Of course I do, up to this present moment. Even into this present moment? While I'm speaking to you, Dr. Darren. Okay. And what do you hope for in the labor movement in Quebec now? Do you think that it's continuing, it's progressing, it's, it's sort of internationalizing and, and understanding its place in the world? Well, I think our union would always be there and uh, it is a good thing. Some people disagree with this, but I know it's really good because when you have a problem, the union will stand for your right. It happened to me many, many occasions and many times before that I have what you call like a problem and the president of the union would come down to the job, he would stop the job and he would call in a conference. He speak to everybody, including the supervisors, and each one that is involved, and to rectify and to iron out the problem so we all would be able to work safely and smoothly without any intimidation and any what you call like victimization. Hector, can you talk a little bit about the poor working conditions that you mentioned earlier? The poor working condition came from uh, people who were afraid to stand up for their rights. They were afraid 
that they will lose their jobs. Because uh, most of the people, like the French Canadians that I work with from Gatsby again, anything that you gave to them, they accepted it. If you tell them to go out on a limb and they will die, they prefer to go there and die ignorantly without opposing or standing up for their rights. And the bosses that we work with, they themselves knew that these people were very timid. They would not ask a question. They would not, what you call, retaliate. Okay, they against, wouldn't challenge them. Exactly, that's the proper word. They would not challenge the bosses concerning where their safety is concerned. So this is what I've seen, and this is what I stood against. The reason for this problem is that I think most of the people in the construction industry were uneducated. And this would have been about 75, 70, yeah. somewhere around there, Oops. or are you talking later? Yeah, this is, this is like from, even from 1968 until oh, around the 80s. Okay. Until about the 80s? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. They were uneducated class. Yes. They might have finished elementary school? No, 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 no. Not even elementary Not school? Not elementary, no. Some of them just are uh, maybe fifth grade, fourth grade, and uh, that was it. All right. As a matter of fact, lots of them could not read or write. But do you think that there are more labor movements, uh, more laborists needed in, in Quebec? More people involved in the labor movement? Or is it pretty healthy? Yeah, I think it's pretty healthy. I mean, we can see from uh, all the, what you call, like, uh, all the things that is happening. We can see all the demonstrations that is taking place right now with the teachers, the policemen, the firemen, and uh, the medical uh, field. Uh, we can see where the union there is standing up, you know, for these people that they would, what you call, get a decent salary, better decent working conditions, and the whole works. And did you ever go on strike? Oh, yes, yes, yes. We did go on strike. As a matter of fact, I did lead a whole, uh, I lead a whole uh, uh, strike demonstration here in Montreal before. When was that? Oh, that's a, a while back. I think it was on uh, maybe the early 70s on St. Denis Street. And, and this was the International Boilermakers Bro Brotherhood Boilermakers. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I'm still a member of uh, the Oilfield Workers' Trade Union in Trinidad and Tobago, as well as the International Brotherhood Boilermakers of Quebec, Canada. So why don't you tell me what you brought with you today, Hector? Okay, I brought, uh, this is what you call like uh, an album that I made of myself because I, I used to have what you call an archive with newspaper clippings and magazine historically from all events, mostly concerning what you call like uh, blacks or black people in general right. or African descendants mm -hmm. as well as white people or white descendants mm -hmm. because we got to remember this country is belonging to the indigenous people. We all came here mm -hmm. as immigrants. Hector, what is the most significant change that you've experienced or that you're aware of in the labor movement here in Quebec since you've been here? A safety. Safety. Can you elaborate a little bit? Yeah, well, safety is what you call like uh, making sure the environment you're working in is safe and clean and healthy, that you can breathe the right, right breath of air, that you can wear all the gadgets, all the gadgets that is important to protect you from danger, accident, and death. Okay, so you think that was the, really must have horrified you then, because you're bringing this up over and over again, the idea that they accepted poor working conditions in unsafe working conditions. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. When you first came, were you appalled by that at all? Were you, were you sort of shocked, or you just kind of said, oh, here we go again? So not mem shows. It was the same? It was the same. Okay. So you probably, if you'd stayed in Trinidad, you would have probably had the same fight to make the working environment safe. Yes, yes. I would have the same fight, and I, I will always have the same fight. So are, when you go back to Trinidad, do you actually go on the, wor the um, oil fields and, and to check to see if the safety level is better in Trinidad? I do not go to the oil field, but I go to the, the union headquarters okay. and I converse with the president and other people that is working in the, in the union office. 
All right. And so it's better now. Yes, it is quite better because, uh, as I mentioned before, like uh, there's conferences and exchange. We have computer and we have internet that all these people, what you call, they work together. So uh, the conditions is much more betterly improved today as we speak presently now. What advice would you give to people in Quebec today, either in the labor movement or in your community? I would like to say to the young people, boys and girls, that uh, it is important to go to school, to get an education, to learn a trade, we do know that some people just not like school, but then you can learn a trade. Because it's important for your livelihood, for your future. Okay, and so what final words of advice would you give to the labor leaders in Quebec today? They should be more open, transparent to the young people outside there, so that uh, they should welcome, welcome them into the organization